Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back again to beautifully sunny Portugal at the launch event for the new McLaren Senna. We've been driving it at Estoril, but today you actually join me the night before. By now you might have seen that I'm going to be one of the lucky ones taking delivery of one of these in due course. But today I'd like to talk a little bit more about it. We'll check out this specific car behind me, but I want to tell you what it's like ordering your first hypercar, the process behind this, the secrecy from putting in my letter saying I'd like it and then a little bit more information about my specific car and when it's coming in the future. So let's have a quick look around this and then dive into the details. With the Atlantic Ocean in the background, we have a Delta Red Senna here on the hotel's balcony. The sun will be going down shortly. We're going to have a drinks reception, but let's take a quick wander around this car. I won't go over it in too much detail. You will have to check out my other video to see everything that you could possibly want to know about the car. But just first glance, is this not the craziest thing you could just about imagine with the size of that rear wing, the extended front end and the massive splitter that it's wearing, but all of the openings, the aerodynamic features and functionality you can see around it. 800 horsepower from the 4-litre V8, 800 kilos of downforce, and the thing only weighs 1,200 kilos to begin with. I'm at this stage very excited to drive it. You've probably seen what it's like already by now though. So let's talk a little bit about what happens behind the scenes with a car like this. They're making 500 of them, and they are basically already, well, when it was launched, were already pretty much allocated to the customers around the world that were going to be taking delivery of them. But pretty much that is born out of sending a letter of intent to the manufacturer. You get hints they might be working on such a car, you express your interest. And I did that about two and a half years ago. I said that I'd be interested in an ultimate series product that was built for the racetrack. If you look at my collection of cars, the cars that all basically track versions, you can imagine how this would be the one that would naturally entice me to enter the hypercar world. It's my first car of, I guess, this category, really, and this is a brand I particularly like. McLaren, I've had my 12C, my 650S, my 675LT Coupe, and my 675LT Spider. So I said, I'd be interested if you make such a thing. Then you fast forward a little bit, more hints and details start to drop out to customers before eventually you hear that it's coming, you get a phone call, and they ask you to pay an awful lot of money as a big deposit, which obviously I made sure I could pull together because, well, one of these in the future. Yes, please, in every possible way. So it was launched at the Winter Ball at the end uh, of last year, at the end of 2017, and then presented um, in full at the Geneva Motor Show to the public in 2018. But really the order process involved making the first deposit, then making a second deposit when it had been unveiled. That basically locked you in and committed you to the order. So at that point, there's kind of no going back, but then I don't think anybody would really want to. There are going to be 500 of them in total. I think obviously less than 100 of those will be in the UK. You can actually spec the car left-hand drive or right-hand drive, depending uh, which region you're in. There are plenty of options, although it has to be said, fair play to McLaren, a lot of them are standard. You can go to MSO and kind of let your imagination run wild, and we will get to that. I've had the early spec sessions and done some ideas and put together some renders for how I'm going to do it, and I'll come back to you with all of that in due course, but ultimately, my car is going to be delivered in early 2019. Let's see when exactly it is, maybe March, that kind of time, March, April. So just in time for the car event season to take this thing out and about and get it to as many places as I possibly can. I can't wait for that. Let's just come and have a better look around though. A quick glance at the interior and this car is open at the moment. I showed you around all of the aero, I think in the full video, but just to open up the doors because look at this, it's proper road race car, but look at how much glass there is, how open it is. And yes, the signature feature, the side doors are an absolute must. I think I'd be crazy not to spec those. I'm interested to hear what specs you think I should do, guys, though. Should it be a return of cerulean blue? Should it be a different color, like a darker blue? Should it be the amethyst purple, amethyst black it's called, with the purple sparkles? That always looks very nice, but in any case, the buckets, the harnesses, the completely stripped out appearance and interior of this thing, the folding dashboard display, you press the button and it tucks away, ready for the track. It's just a crazy thing to behold. I'm not sure if it's gonna be the best for road trips. There is only a tiny amount of storage back here, so probably it's gonna be a little bit too, I think, mileage sensitive to actually attack that kind of driving. We'll have to see what happens and whether I can justify it in some form. But the excitement is absolutely in overdrive when it comes to the McLaren Senna. The back, the triple exhaust, 
titanium finishes and Inconel exhaust inside it. This is the muffler, so the US cars only have the double exhaust rather than the triple. But it's just so open and so clearly for purpose and stripped out. And Just imagine what driving this will be like on the likes of Silverstone or Spa or the Nürburgring or something like that in future. A few of you might remember a video that I made about two years ago, summer 2016, when I collected my new Ford Focus RS. Clearly quite a different car to the Senna behind me, but I made a piece talking about the relative pros and cons of running a hypercar versus a collection of supercars, a variety of different cars to drive. Now at the time I talked a little bit about the running costs behind cars, perhaps like this, or at the time the 918 Spider or the P1, but also by having multiple different cars. Perhaps it might seem unnecessary, but certainly in terms of the videos, it opens up plenty more doors for different content, going to different events, going on different trips with them, but also different driving experiences, which is something I enjoy so much, being able to see what the different brands are like, what the different cars are like. For example, the AMG GTR that I bought thinking I would like, but I've turned out to absolutely love. And I also said, of course, that there was a financial aspect of this. Unfortunately for me, the position or the time has now come that I'm in a position that it's possible to make the and add a Senna to the collection without having to, let's say, sell everything. Something, one or two things will have to go. Obviously, I'm going to keep my McLaren 675 LT Spider and the Vantage GT8, but we'll see what happens down the line in terms of other cars, because obviously this is a huge outlay um, to add to the collection, but also it's not a car that I can just drive. I can't go and do 10,000 miles a year in a Senna. I would love to do it, but I can't. I will definitely try to take it to track days and try to take it to events, but it will probably have to spend quite a lot of time in trailers just because the mileage is going to accumulate expense very, very quickly in terms of things like brakes, servicing, you name it, you can imagine. I guess it would actually be potentially quite usable. I think the one thing that would be the problem would be the extended front, the front splitter that sticks out 15 centimeters further than even the P1 did. And that was already quite far at the front. Of course, it does have um, a four wheel lift system, so you can lift up the whole car to get better ground clearance, but that would be the one major drawback. We could deal with the lack of space because you've got a passenger footwell for that. But literally, I think it boils down to the time feels like it's come. The right car is here. It's not a, you know, a two million pound car or two and a half million pound car. It's an expensive car at 750,000 plus a little bit for some options, but it's not the you know, crazy next next level price tag that would make it almost impossible. Another thing that's pretty cool at the moment is the announcement from various motorsport bodies that hypercars are going to return to the racetrack. Events like the Le Mans 24 Hours are going to have a GTP category with potentially cars like this decked out in their full crazy race design livery with even more aero and bonkersness than this car already has. The likes of McLaren, Ferrari, I think Toyota, a few others have already been talking about what they're going to do in that respect. Now I don't necessarily know if there's going to be a Senna racing it, but how cool would it be if this thing raced at Le Mans in 2020, 2021? It would just be absolutely incredible. So fingers crossed that somehow that manages to happen. In any case, that race series is going to be incredible to watch. Just a return to, I think, what got me really into cars. It's that period of the McLaren F1, the Mercedes CLK GTR, the Porsche 911 GT1, those road going hypercars that went out and raced as well. And hopefully we're going to have a return to that. And that's another aspect with this, knowing that it was going to be so track focused, so track based, that I thought it had to just look like it was going to be from another planet when it eventually turned up and could be driven on the roads. And I think it's safe to say, if you actually look at this thing, it really and truly does. There is not much out there that resembles the appearance of a McLaren Senna. Yes, people have made jokes with reference to the wing that's perhaps a little bit far forward, but this is legislation. Remember, it's a road car, and you'll notice that the wing is basically as far to the back of the car as it's legally allowed to be with the double, uh, the double layer to it. But also this car just has a number of really key things that connect it. You know, the fact that it's called Senna, named after Ayrton Senna, and that's why we're in Estoril. It's where he won his first Grand Prix race um, back in the day. But you look around at you know, this thing, this bracket, that's literally from the MP5 race car, inspired by that, one of Senna's old cars. I think the color scheme, having the bright colors contrasting, just emphasizes and exaggerates some of the design, which for me works so well. It's been a big talking point when it first launched and the first pictures were out there. But believe me, when you see a Senna in person, if you're ever fortunate enough to do so at an event, do take a minute just to take it in. The phrase scientifically beautiful has never been more accurate when you're looking at one of these in terms of the way the styling was clearly 
dictated by performance. You know, the way you have gurney flaps at the front, the way you have the nose bridge, the nose bridge is a bit quirky, but it means you get the clean, unbroken air that goes up towards the roof scoop. For me, I think the roof scoop though would be very nice if it was done in carbon fiber. That's one thing I'm gonna think about for sure. Back there, we've got the engine. This car has the carbon backboard, but you can also have a glass window at the rear to be able to see through to the engine if you wish. This is a development car, a prototype car, so to speak, but clearly, Lots of work non-stop is being done to them. Ginormous brakes, just look at the size of that brake disc. They're CCMR brakes. They take seven months to bake a disc. They are presumably going to be very expensive things if you get through them on a track there and they're hidden behind, or hidden behind, they're placed behind the new wheel, the first center lock wheel that McLaren have had on one of their cars as well. It'd also be cool to have those um, race style, I think, where you have blue on one side and red on the other, like on a, uh, on a race car, but the whole thing, just looks bonkers and crazy in every possible way. And that's, I think, part of what it's about. I have not yet sat in a right-hand drive McLaren Senna. So let's just take a quick look at this one. Obviously everything just kind of reverses. The interior that is so stripped out, but the tablet points back towards the right-hand side. This control is attached to the seat. This is something that's really awesome as well, the way when you slide that forwards and backwards, it moves with it. Then we can step in over Mono Cage 3, the tub for this car. It's not too hard to get in and out of, to be completely honest. Wow, it just feels so airy inside here. The roof glass, the F1 style doors from the old McLaren F1, and then that look outside the car. So that's the backboard that you could have with glass. Oh, I hadn't noticed there was a cargo net down at the bottom. That's, uh, I guess, useful for a few small little bits and bobs. We've got a storage uh, compartment here with USB ports. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. So at this stage, you've seen my video driving it. I've only sat here, you've got the button here to start it. I've not actually been out in it. That's still to come, that level of excitement. Honestly, this time is just crazy. You guys are awesome for making this adventure journey possible. I love sharing this with you. Thank you so much for just being part of it. The screen's folding itself away there. This is, well, this is the center, isn't it? This car pays tribute to the legend all the carbon everywhere. There's nothing in here that doesn't need to be. Carbon, bit of Alcantara over the airbags. The gas struts that you can paint, like I said, those are gonna be painted. But other than that, it's just totally stripped out and glassy <laughs> and carbony. Oh, that we get. Not too hard, not too much harder if you're familiar with getting out of LTs, because you have the lower tub. It's just that part of the seat that renders it slightly awkward anyway. It's not built for practicality, it's built for driving on the track. That's what all of these buttons are set out and designed to do, and you know, the roof buttons inspired by a fighter jet style. Look how thin the door card is. Crazy, 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 crazy. So, this is happening. McLaren Senna is coming. I cannot wait to share all of this with you and to go through the process of, I guess, what's effectively my first hypercar. And what a special one it's gonna be. So I hope you enjoyed the video I shot. I hope I've given you a little bit more information now and answer some of the questions you might have been asking me in the first video that will come before this one. Yes, all slightly confusing, but there'll be plenty more with this car. Next up, we'll be to go through some of the spec options in due course, and then I'll let you know what spec I eventually lock in. Hopefully there'll be some more opportunities as well with different things that are going on through to delivery that like I mentioned, I'm expecting around the spring of 2019. So nine months or so from now, not all that long to be honest. There's another big addition coming a couple of months before that, as you probably know. Imagine what these two cars are gonna be like together. Bring it on, I can't wait. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to me rambling on a bit there, guys. I hope I've answered some of the questions you were wondering about the Senna, about what it's gonna be like going forwards with this. But I'll wrap this one up for there. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers.